Hey everyone, Jeff Monroe from Middlebury, still at it on the collector's tour. I just finished emptying dust one, um, but I got some bonus material for you. For those who've stuck with it this long, um, there's something else I got to show you while we're up here, and it is not too far away. Is this thing over here? Kind of looks like an alien spacecraft, maybe landed up on the tundra. This is a weather station. This is the Chapita Remote Automated Weather Station. It has been here since the Forest Service installed it in the summer of 1997. Um, we're over 12,000 feet in elevation here, so this is one of the highest and longest climate records or weather records has become a climate record um, in the United States. It really is just kind of remarkable that this thing is here and that it has survived for so many years. There have been some interruptions in the record for sure. Um, as you might expect, I've been here late in October, which is basically the start of winter sometimes, and it is not a friendly place. So I can't imagine what it's like in the middle of winter. Uh, but basically every hour on the hour, we're getting wind speed and direction, we're getting three sip, we're getting soil temperature, we're getting air temperature um, from this site. Why this is important for the dust project is that if you look at the wind data from this site, from the anometer and the wind vane up there on the top, um, it's really strikingly bimodal. The wind either blows from the northwest or from the south. Really have to wait a long time up here for to do anything else. It's blowing hard from the south right now. When I saw this, I realized maybe I could improve upon my passive sampler a little bit. Passive sampler, after all, collects anything that lands on it. Um, doesn't matter what direction it came from. And I decided to build an active sampler that could actually collect a separate sample of north-derived dust and south-derived dust. And it's over here. It's basically all this stuff, which I bolted directly onto the old snow gauge. Uh, we got two solar panels firing this thing up, keeping it going all through the winter. In the box up here, we got the battery bank. Uh, and yes, that is an old repurposed Utah license plate serving as the wind vane. So when the wind is blowing hard from the south, this thing will push off to the right like this. When it's blowing hard from the north, it goes the other direction. There's a switch inside. The switch controls which of these two fans over here is on at any given time. This is the north sampler right here. So we got an in intake on this side facing to the north. The tube is filled with the same glass beads that are in um, the passive samplers. And then we got the fan on this end. So this fan will turn on um, when the wind is blowing from the north. Here's the intake for the south, which is the wind direction right now. And so on the back side here, the south fan is, is working hard and pulling air through the beads. Um, so the active sampler, I installed this in 2013 with the help of two students, Emily Atwood and Sam O'Keefe. Thanks, guys. It was not easy getting all this stuff up here. Um, and it's been here ever since, collecting something that's really kind of a step beyond what I get with the passive sampler. It's collecting a separate sample of uh, dust that comes from the north and comes from the south so we can see what the difference is. The only real modification that I made to this, um, I discovered after a few years that it really wasn't collecting very much dust, um, and which sometimes made it difficult to do all the analyses I wanted. So Emmett Norris and I in 2016 or 2017 added these bottle samplers onto the top. This is kind of a modified Wilson and Cook bottle sampler here. So when the wind is blowing from the north, um, air and dust can go right in this inlet here, swirl around inside the bottle, and the air comes out here and the dust stays behind. Probably not going to be able to see it all that well, but there's actually dust in there. Um, and I will get to work on emptying both the active sampler and the supplemental bottle sampler here in just a moment. So um, another interesting observation here at, at site, uh, dust one anyway, not so much an observation, just a reality. We've got this unusually long and detailed weather record. That's why I put the dust one collector here in the first place. And that's why I came in a few years later and installed this active sampler, which is still at it. Um, 10 years, 10 or 11 year record now. So I look forward to working with the active sampler data uh, when I get those samples back to the lab. Thanks for listening. Um, thanks to the Forest Service for letting me piggyback my active sampler onto their weather station. And thanks to the National Science Foundation for supporting all this work.